Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about my top two hacks for being successful with Airbnb. Coming up. Hi everyone, this is Ernesto from Attaboy Cowboy. And on this channel, we give investment chips to help you grow your wealth faster. So one of the strategies we use is Airbnb. And today I'm gonna to give you my top two hacks for being successful on their platform. Tip number one, never decline anyone. Okay, Airbnb, Uber, a lot of these services, they don't really want you declining people because that makes people unhappy. Imagine yourself at 10 o'clock at night, a Saturday night, you're on your phone looking for a place to go with you and your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever and you keep sending requests and people keep declining you. It can be real frustrating and it makes people not really want to use the service. So Airbnb, Uber, these companies, they're worried about filling their service and making their revenue. You, on the other hand, you're concerned about the quality of the people that are coming to your home, right? Like we try to avoid people that smoke or smoke marijuana or anything like that because it causes a lot of damage. Most people don't like that. So if someone comes into your place and they smoke, all your cushions and your curtains and everything are gonna have a foul odor. And it takes a lot of work to clean it, clean it out. So you may not have enough time to get it clean for the next guest that's coming. So it's counterintuitive to wanna to accept everyone. The problem is that if you decline people, you get pushed down the queue. So in Los Angeles, there's about 16,000 listings. So let's say it's a Friday night and I have an empty unit and I want to make sure it gets booked because I don't want the empty space, right? If you have empty space, you lose the revenue. So you want to make sure that you're higher up in the queue versus at the end of the line. The more people that you accept and the faster that you respond, Airbnb has an algorithm. It actually pushes you up in the line. So you're more likely to succeed if they succeed. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Now, if I get someone that I don't really want because of their smoking habits or their pets or whatever the issue might be, I'm not necessarily gonna decline them, but what I'll do is I'll send them a special offer. So if the room is renting for about $50, I'll send them a special offer for twice the amount, for about $100. So someone that's over here shopping in the $50 range isn't gonna all of a sudden book for 100, right? That's not, not usual, and if they do, then you know, you'll get twice as much. Maybe it's worth the hassle. But to be honest with you, it rarely happens. By sending them a special offer that's twice as much, you're not declining the person, but yet they're not gonna book it because it's not favorable to them. It's not in the price range you're looking for. By not declining, you're gonna be at the top of the line every time. And you're gonna get a lot of requests. That really, really helps me. That's been one of our keys to success is never declining. And if someone, sends an automatic booking, not, not instant book. We don't use instant book because that brings in a lot of situations we just don't want to deal with. I'll decline it and then immediately send a, a special offer. If it's an inquiry, send a special offer. If it's someone you don't want, double the price. So that's our first strategy. Never decline anyone. That's going to help you move up in their algorithm, which is a robot and it helps move people to the front line that are booking more frequently. That way, Airbnb is more inclined to get their revenues. That's the first tip. Tip number two is don't be afraid to give refunds. Now, anyone that has any experience in this knows that there's a lot of hustlers out there and there's a lot of people that are constantly trying to make up scenarios to try to get refunded. And in my experience, it seems like Airbnb is rarely on the whole size. That's just my opinion. But so the way to protect yourself from that is, I'm gonna give you an example. A couple days ago, we were installing solar panels on a house. And at the end of the day, the girl wrote to me. She says, hey, you know what? I work from home. I wasn't able to work all day. I had someone up on top of the roof for about six hours. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, that's reasonable. The thing is that she never told us that she was working from home. We try not to book people that are working from home because they use up a lot of utilities and they put a lot of wear and tear in the unit. 
So we were actually unaware of that, but she's already in the unit, so what can we do? So what she was requesting is a refund for the entire day. Now that particular unit is a high value unit. It's $200 a day. So $200 is a big loss and those workers did not finish. They were gonna come back the next day. So she was gonna be asking for another day if I gave it the first day. So we're talking about a $400 loss. That's a lot of money. So basically what we did was Instead of just flat out telling her no and getting her upset and causing a bunch of other issues and then having to go to Airbnb and they'll probably give them their money anyway. What we did was we told her, hey, you know what? That's, that's reasonable. I apologize for the inconvenience. What we're gonna do is we're gonna refund you the time that you were inconvenienced. So basically, instead of giving her $400, we got six hours one day, six hours the next day, it's 12 hours, that's actually half a day, 100 bucks. So we gave her back $100 instead of 400. So she feels like she won, she got some money back and it seems reasonable that you were refunded for the amount of time that you're inconvenienced. Sometimes we have scenarios where someone's inconvenienced for an hour or two because they clogged the toilet or they did some other kind of damage and they're upset, they want their money back. Obviously it wasn't your fault, but the thing is that if you don't do it you risk losing everything so it's better just to take that small loss and avoid the big loss okay so those are the top two strategies thank you for listening and if you haven't already please subscribe